Hello, this is Neil from iPaintGirls.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint with the mouse or how to blur blend with the mouse, how to color with the mouse, whatever you wish to call it. I really don't recommend doing this though because painting with the mouse is like painting with a, a lumpy rock or an oddly shaped rock. It's extremely difficult and very time consuming. But I understand that you're eager and you want to start doing digital painting and you just can't wait. And I couldn't wait either and so I started doing digital painting with the mouse. And I, I did some pretty decent stuff but it, oh my gosh it took forever. Instead what I recommend doing is like going to eBay or going to Wacom website and buy a Wacom tablet. You can also go to your local Staples and they should be carrying a Wacom tablet. They're only 80 bucks or 89 bucks, something like that. Anyway, you can also look for used ones on eBay. You even look for older models like the um, Wacom Graphire tablets. I, I the, the tablets I recommend getting, I think are the absolute best to use, is the Cintiq. You can get a Cintiq 12WX for $1,000 brand new. You can also find them used. Um, but if not, you can also get the Intuos 4, which is very comparable. And 2S4 is pretty awesome for the price. Anyway, but Bamboo is awesome too. So whatever you can afford, try to get that because a mouse is ridiculous. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and by the way, you can visit my website. The link is in the description, ipaintgirls.com. I have a lot of cool free tutorials there you can check out. And also I have some uh, inexpensive paid-for tutorials like 9 hours of Photoshop training for only 10 bucks. So it's, it's, really, it's really worth it. It's CS5. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is start with the base color. And also I'm going to lock... I'm going to lock my uh, drawing, and I'm going to lock the background. That way I don't actually paint on those. Sometimes I do that. I'm just going to use some sort of um, base tone here for the skin color. I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to show you the settings here really quick. So I don't have to worry about shape dynamics being to pin pressure. I know it's set to pin pressure right now because I use a tablet, but it's not going to work because I'm using a mouse, so I don't have to worry about it. Other than that, it's just a standard hard brush. And I'm not going to be too worried about going outside the lines right now because I can go back and erase that kind of stuff. And besides, I'm not going to be doing like a finished painting or anything here. I just want to show you how to blend with the, with the mouse. The best way to blend with the mouse, I think, is using soft brushes, personally. Right, so once we have this base color there, then I'm going to pick, um, I'm actually just going to take that base color and I'm just going to drop it down into the left usually is how I like to do it. Because it's, it, you know, you want to get desaturated and you could even get cooler with, with your, you know, shadows if you wanted to, but I can just add a little cool later. So I just like to, you know, do it monotone first. At this stage, you could do like a hard line if you wanted to still, but I'm actually going to go to a soft brush. I'm still working at 100% because I want to just put down my my base tones that I know are going to appear. And I'm actually going to choose this one here. This locks the transparency so I can't go outside the lines here. I can only work within those those line regions that I have on here. Right, so I know that it's going to be something like so. So what, what I'm doing here is just putting putting in, you know, the overall shapes that I know are going to kind of be there. I might want to start, you know, going a slightly smaller brush here. You know, but you start with the biggest brush possible and then work your way down as you need to. I'm not worried about that being so dark there cuz I can fix it later. And I might just go like that and grab that little color like that. You hold on the alt key to pick to pick color to pick colors up. So now I'm going to turn down my opacity to about 30 or so. You might you can turn it lower if you need to. And I want to show this brush. Let's see here. Where's the setting is at? So it's just a brush here that this is set to pin pressure, but I'm not using a pin, so it's not going to make any difference with the mouse. But notice it's a soft brush. So if you go to here, I have the hardness all the way turned off so it's completely 100% soft brush. You can try you know maybe somewhere in between hard and soft too and see how that works for you. But main thing is um, a painting will have uh, some hard and soft. I like to start soft anyway because a painting will have a little bit of hard, a little bit of soft throughout it anyways. So I'm going to take my highlight color here and I know where I want to want most of my highlights so I'm just going to kind of brush them in here. And what's important about the highlight or excuse me, um, rather about the shadow, is where the shadow rolls into the light. Notice I'm just putting in 
some of my brightest lights where I know the light is hitting the most in here which is all along those edges there the edge of that right there it's going to be hitting a little bit in there not much so anyway back to what I was saying about the shadows is where the shadow hits I don't want that where the shadow hits the where it rolls over where the shadow rolls over into the I guess you can call it the neutral color that's the warmest part of the skin so what I like to do then is grab a color that's between these two colors by holding down the alt key and selecting it and I'm gonna make it warm so I'm gonna just go over here to like saturation and maybe just make it a little bit more red and so this is gonna be a warm color here and this is gonna go right along the edge of that line like that then I come back here and I can kinda get rid of some of that if I want to as you can see it's already starting to shape up to something that looks like something but it looks horrible without the hard lines so what's important then notice I'm, I'm just I'm clicking the mouse over again and again to get the color as I want it to build it up I'm slowly building up so I paint it let go of the mouse le left let go of the left click button on the mouse and then click again and paint let go click again paint like that and you just slowly build it up like this I'm gonna put in some white where the teeth would be actually they're gonna be mostly dark anyway so I'm not gonna worry about the lip color yet at this stage now I gotta start kinda you know modeling the the character and this is pretty hard with the mouse because it's like it's hard to get you want to you want to zoom in it's hard to you know pull the lines exactly how you want them so you want to try to do a good job with you know with within this stage here you want to try to make it to where everything's kinda how you you know want it to be again start your brush as big as you can at first and then slowly come down in size I also want to take this warm color here I kinda of want to put it along there just a little bit like that a little bit right here I want to take this darker color and put it in the nostril here the nostrils actually end up being extremely dark but for now I'm just working with this color this is how just I, how I personally like to to work when I'm doing this so so notice I'm just grabbing a color I'm painting it down with a few clicks you know click make a stroke click make a stroke it's hard to make you know clean strokes with the mouse but you know whatever you want to learn how to paint with the mouse so that's what we're doing save up the money get a tablet they're really not that expensive even even if you have to get a used one it's really worth it it, it takes time to get used to though I mean, you have to get like if it's especially if it's a tablet like that where you're you're having to I'm putting I'm just grabbing that where you have to actually draw like where you're not drawing on the screen with the Cintiq you're you're drawing on the screen and that really makes a difference but uh, you know bamboo you're not drawing on a screen so it, it takes some time to adjust getting used to drawing with the t you know with the tablet with the, something that's kind of like a pen except you're you know, you're drawing on the table and the screens in front of you so that does take getting used to but once you get used to that once you master that it really just oh man it's so awesome digital painting is so much fun and it's really worth taking the time to to get used to that to get used to that change so what I do is I just you know I keep building up the shapes slowly so the technique really isn't much different I'm just using a mouse I'm just instead of you know so if what you're looking for is more like well how do I how do I paint in general then what you're gonna to wanna to do I'm using a hard brush here that has yeah I'm just using a hard brush now what you're gonna to wanna to do then is look at my other videos for how to digital paint and once you have that digital painting foundation then that's, all, that's really all I'm doing except I'm using a mouse to do it so notice I build up little pieces of color at a time here I'm going to turn this way down I'm going to use my alt key to kind of pull that color back in just kind of lighten up part of this bottom part here this over here this nostril is going to be um, an extreme light but red color like so I just want to build that nostril up. Another technique you use a lot with mouse is cutting. So you, you paint that little bit and then you come back in and you paint around it and you cut away that color that you just put down. And that's uh, one way that kind of helps painting with a mouse. 
but whatever techniques you use, it's time consuming and difficult. I'm holding it down right now to make this whole shape. I'm not letting go of the button because I want this whole shape to come out. And then I'm going to kind of darken up parts of it like this by holding it one down again, letting go and hold down again. Then I'm going to use the Alt key and kind of blend that together. The reason why it takes so long to paint with a mouse is because you have to work at low opacity and build up slowly, otherwise it doesn't look right. You can't get smooth strokes with a mouse, so it's kind of the way you have to do it. I'm going I'm to use some of this really light color here and just kind of paint it right in here because this is where light usually hits right along this area. So I want to I'm going to take this dark color here. I'm going to kind of paint it along. I'm going to paint the lid here. So the under part of the lid is going to be dark. So I'm going to paint it dark like this. So, you know, just like with, you know, like I talked about with digital painting, you start with your base shapes first and you get all that down, and then only then do you start going in and painting in details. And again, the only thing different then is here I'm painting the details with a mouse. That's really it. I see. Like if I see, I'm gonna have to turn. Sometimes if you can't get the line like you want it, just turn the opacity down, and then you can get some, you know, smooth. There we go. Then I'm gonna go back up to around 30. 30 is usually what I stay at. But if there, if I notice I can't get a line as I want, how I want it, then I'll go ahead and turn the opacity down even more. Now notice what happens when I take away the, the line work. It looks very ugly. And so you would have to go in with a hard brush and paint in the lines, and that is so difficult with a mouse. But if you want to try it, go ahead. I recommend just doing your, your line work with pencil or something and scanning it if you want to color or paint with a mouse. And then, you know, try to paint over, I, I guess, paint over that drawing the best you can with your mouse if you want but it's just so hard to get the lines to get to be smooth so you might want to consider just leaving the line work there and then just color underneath it so you get kind of a not quite a, a painterly look but you'll it'll look partly painted and partly kind of you know drawn kind of like a comic or something but painted comic maybe but you can go in and you know draw the lines with your mouse if you want and uh, you know just keep getting your brush smaller and smaller it's just not going to look as good as it would if you could do it with a tablet I'm going to turn my passy way down here I just want because I just want a little bit of more of a white light in some of these areas here They pop out more. All this, I want it to be kind of lighter like that. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, you just continue this process. Really, is what it's what it consists of. I'm gonna turn it back to around 30. Anywhere around 30, I think, is optimal place to do majority of your painting in. There's this little detail I want to put in here where the light is going to come and hit the lip. Also I want to add some detail here. Also when, you, when you're working with a soft brush, as you turn it down and add details to, to edges, you can kind of get a sharper edge just because the brush is smaller. So the brush being smaller allows you to get sharper edges. But you don't want too sharp edges in some places. You want you want the edges to be soft. So a painting consists of a good balance of sharp and soft edges. The sharp edges are usually where details are, pretty much where the drawing is at. And the soft edges are everywhere else pretty much. For the lips, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make them a little bit more red a little bit darker color, a little bit more red, and I think that'll work as a base color for my lips. Notice I'm I'm keeping the button held down as I paint in the lips. So I go through and get the 
color there, and then I do the same for the bottom. Because as you overlap, it gets darker and darker since you have the opacity turned down. So you want to just try to get the shapes in. And then I, you know, where do I want the dark, darker parts? And that's when I click, you know, click a few times and darken that area up. And the same thing is going to happen right along here. That's going to be darker as well. And all along the edge here. And I could use, you know, darker color as well. As I go more, I can add more shadow. Right now I'm just defining the shapes themselves. You know, what, what kind of shapes do I want? I'm going to now use my color picker tool. See, I'm just going to add a little bit of this highlight into the lips here. Notice since I can't, you know, change the thickness of the brush as I'm moving like I can with the tablet, I have to continually, you know, use smaller and smaller brushes to get details. And then, you know, just little clicks and stuff to get those details on there. And it's hard to, you know, draw your clean lines with the mouse, so you know, you just gotta do the best you can. And then what you want to do to get like sharp lines is again is the cutting technique. So it's coming back in with that with another color that's around that light color, pick it, and then just kind of cut into what you have there to try to shape it the you know more of the shape that you want the highlight to be in. And so this is what the process consists of. I'm going to take a bigger brush. I'm going to turn the opacity way down. And this is another trick you can do. And you can kind of pull over dark parts to lighten up shadows like that. So I don't want the shadow there to be as dark. So I'm going to just kind of lighten up a few times. Like so. Also, I want there to be some underlighting here. And it's going to be hitting under here. All this chin area. Like so. And then I'm going to take a um, almost kind of a bluish color and notice I'm still on a really low opacity I'm just going to kind of hit as if this is a bounce reflect light that's showing some of the detail of the other side of the face that's in shadow and you know you take the dark colors where you know it's going to be the darkest and you can begin to I should probably go back up to 30% or somewhere even darker than that I don't have to do this so many times you know, just kind of define some shapes in the ear. Like so. And anyway, so that's that's how that's how you paint with a mouse. You just keep going like that and building up, building up. So the technique's a little different than it, you know, if you're using a tablet, a lot more time consuming, but that's how you get around some of the hurdles. Then you can go in and take things like, you know, your soft light brushes. So I'm a, I can take a soft light brush and turn it way down here. And let's say I kind of wanted more uh, kind of cool in the shadows. I can just kind of paint over it like that. Let's say I want it kind of a little bit more warm everywhere else. I can take that color and kind of warm up all that. And then, um, you know, I want this more cool. So let's go back to a cooler color. And you can kind of you know, mess with the colors that way to get it more away from the monotone colors you started with. You can add a little bit of that color in there and I want too much of it maybe just a little bit just a little bit into the nose like, like a mouse click or whatever on 18 percent a little bit into the lips maybe grab some of this and just add a little more color to lips and then I can go in and, and you know back to my normal brush and add more details to the lips darker color so let's say something like this I can just add a little bit more darker shadows in some places of the lips Another way I can darken up if I already if I already like the detail I have and I don't really want to ruin the details, I can go to um, soft light and pick a dark color like black. And I can just kind of pull that color. It works similar to um, burn, and it's almost just like burn actually, but more controlled. And just add a few colors like that into it. Then I might want to go to saturation or something, and uh, maybe even even less percent. I just want to kind of desaturate some of that. Then go to normal. Now I can just kind of grab these colors and paint them around. Let's see here. I kind of want a little bit of that.
color reflecting off that part of the lips. Then I want this darker, the darkest part of the lip here. I'm going to grab that color, my line colors, and I'm going to just pick a really small brush here. And I'm going to add the most detailed part of the lips right in here, which I'll probably leave for the line work to really do, but I might want to just paint a few little details in here like this to give the lips some shape. And then all this right here is probably going to be like a rim of like that, so I want all that in there. Right, so then um, there's going to be a little bit of shadow. I'm going to turn this back up to like 30. A little bit of shadow um, like all along here. Take my small brush, just kind of shadow that in there a little bit. So I really don't see the point in continuing in because you're not, I, I really don't have anything else to teach, I think. That's really the mouse technique. I did some detailed parts and, uh, you know, so that should give you, you, know, you just keep getting your, your brush smaller and smaller as you add those details in. It's really kind of, the, like I said, the same principles as with, as if you're using a tablet, except you have to, you know, mess with the opacities a lot, whereas with a tablet you don't, and you can't get size variation, which is kind of a bummer. But majority of your painting anyway with the tablet, you don't really mess with the size variation. You you you, you don't use shape dynamics. Uh, you only use shape dynamics for for certain details and stuff. But for the most part, you don't use it. So there you go. Like I said, it's just going to be time consuming. You know, if you you know if you enjoyed this, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. Um, if you want to go ahead and post your your own work, that is, if you want to post a video response of of how you did with the mouse, then go ahead and do that. I'd like to see your guys' mouse work. Again, thank you for watching. You can visit my website, ipaintgirls.com. The link is in the description. Um, I always, you know, appreciate your guys' comments in the video, and you know, your thumbs up and all that, because you know, it just uh, encourages me and keeps me going and everything. And I'm sorry I haven't been doing tutorials as much lately. I've just been really, really busy and personal, complicated life stuff. And yeah, so if you wanna, you know, send me your best wishes, that's cool. All right, thanks.